Hey guys, let's talk iOS 13. In this video, I wanted to bring together everything we currently know about iOS 13 into one video. So that includes all of the rumored features, the leaks, of course, the rumored devices. That article broke a few days ago. I've had a ton of people freaking out asking me, what's going on? Is iOS 13 dropping support for my device? So we're gonna talk about that, the release dates, basically everything you need to know about iOS 13. And I wanted to show you the dark mode in action on iOS 12, thanks to the new jailbreak. It is so cool. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit in this video. Anyways, let's get started. Everything you need to know about iOS 13. So in case you were doubting that Apple is working on iOS 13, yes, it is being worked on and the analytics at Mac rumors are picking up more and more devices that are visiting their website running iOS 13. So these are internal builds. This isn't something that you can download and get right now. But of course it is being worked on and all of those magical new features that we heard about. So in a nutshell, iOS 13 is going to be the one. The firmware we've been waiting for for a very long time, all those changes that Apple has been putting off for years, we're finally going to be getting. Since iOS 7, we've had numerous amount of releases of iOS and no major changes, no major physical redesigns, anything like that. It's been honestly kind of stale and they're losing me slowly. If if iOS 13 comes out and nothing is changed icon wise, oh man, I'm I'm seriously going to consider switching to Android at this point just for my personal device, even though I probably won't, man. It's attached to everything. My computers, the notes, the iMessage, I, I literally cannot leave, but I'm stuck with the same icons. So let's hope that those are updated, but Bloomberg is reporting with Mark Gurman. Indeed, iOS 13 is going to be receiving that redesign we've been wanting for so long. That includes the home screen on the iPads and the iPhones. So there's gonna be some changes there. We don't know what new icons, possibly an all new orientation because we've been looking at the same icon set on iPhones for the longest time. I mean, isn't it about time that Apple switches them up a little? I certainly hope that that rumor stands true and there's no reason for it not to be coming from Mark Gurman. And here's a comment on the design of iOS 13 that I really hope holds to be true. So currently in the wallet app, if you take a look at the Apple Pay Cash, card and you shimmer it in the light, it does change. And there is that sort of skeuomorphic design already present in iOS 12 in certain areas. The emojis certainly have it. And John Gruber of Daring Fireball made this comment here, basically hoping that Apple will expand that in iOS 13, that he has a gut feeling Apple could do that. And I would love that. A modern take on skeuomorphism as 9to5Mac wrote an article about could certainly be a very beautiful thing, especially with all those light effects, just reacting to your environment natively on the iPhone and in real time. It certainly has the processing power for it. Question is, is Apple gonna want to do something like that? Very cool all around. I hope that comment stands to be true. Now, of course, the showstopper of iOS 13 is going to be the dark mode. So dark interface, maybe dark elements in the UI like this Noctis tweak. Mark Gurman wrote in his article that iOS 13 will indeed be introducing dark mode following macOS Mojave, where they introduced that there. It's certainly a beautiful look. It matches the iPhone very well. The organic LED display will take advantage of the power savings. It's just something that Apple should have done a very long time ago. And building off of this, they can make even more features work with the iPhone 10 and above specifically with the organic LED display. They can make an always on display work. They could do something with the notch, some cool animations around there. It's just the possibilities are endless and Apple has not been taking advantage of this display at all. And with iOS 13, they will start to do that with the dark mode. So that's the number one feature to be excited about about iOS 13. And live photos are being updated as well from three seconds to six seconds in length. So Apple will be taking a look at the camera, the capabilities of it, of course, with the triple lens coming out on the iPhone 11, they're gonna wanna expand that. And hopefully the camera application does get some love as well because that has not been touched in a while. And as the iOS 13 concept shown here, there is a much better way that Apple could be handling the recording quality settings within the camera app like any other normal smartphone manufacturer. So that's something I hope they do add, but they certainly will be working on the camera app as well. And the Files app is supposedly in for a rework as well. Now, what this means, we don't exactly know. Will Apple be giving us more access into the files possibly? Hardly. What they will most likely be doing is redesigning the app, making it more user-friendly. In general, it's just a very lightweight application. There's not much you can do on it yet. And hopefully with iOS 13, they expand that further. And the absolute major focus of iOS 13 will be on the iPads. Mark Gurman is saying that Apple will finally be giving the iPads the love they deserve, not necessarily a new 
pad OS or something separate, but it will be expanding its capabilities within apps. You'll be able to have multiple tabs open of the same application side by side even. So that'll mean increased productivity. Aside from that, it will be seeing a rework in many areas as well. So aside from that, we don't know too much, but the iPad will be a very big focus of iOS 13 and the mail application. So that's going to be getting some love as well, where you'll be able to mute certain notifications from a specific thread or source, which is something that you should be able to do already. But hey, that's one of the features supposedly Apple will be adding. And in iOS 13, one of the biggest features to be introduced will be cross-platform apps. For years, we've already been hearing about this. You'll be able to run the same application on iPad, on Mac, and vice versa. So more power to the users, more power to the people that own multiple devices and they just want to go on the road and use the same application on all of their devices, not necessarily being forced to use a mobile version or something like that. So applications that are cross-platform compatible on multiple devices. And of course, how can we forget Apple's most important feature, emojis? Okay, not really, but in iOS 13, Unicode 12.0 will be introduced and this will likely come in iOS 13.1 or 13.2. It could come during initial release, we'll see. But iOS 13 will include new emojis and here's a list of what those could look like. So they include multiple different ones, different types of faces, many different orientations of people doing different things, objects, of course, we've got waffles, a parachutes, a blade for shaving, swimsuits, you know, swimming gear. Very cool all around, filling in the gaps of all those missing emoji pieces that were just missing out of your life that you were looking for, you could never find them. Well, now in iOS 13, you will. And also a feature I don't see being mentioned often is RCS support. So this is an upgraded SMS standard. It's similar to iMessage in certain ways, but basically it would be like iMessage from Android to iPhone. Apple is looking into adding this supposedly, the rumor goes Microsoft and Google, of course, are spearheading this. They just want this out there as soon as possible. They need a true iMessage competitor. And for Apple to add this, is it in their best interest when so many people use an iPhone for iMessage? That remains to be seen, but supposedly Apple is looking to add it for iOS 13. Okay, so next up, let's talk support, guys. Okay. Okay, so if the rumors were to be believed, which of these devices would be supported? This is the current lineup here on iOS 12. And of course, I've got the 10s, the 10R, 10, the 8 series, 7 series, 6S series, 6SE, and then the 5S. So according to that rumor, all of these right here would basically be getting removed. So almost half of all current supported devices. Of course, that includes the plus models especially. And uh, yeah, I just find it hard to believe that Apple would be discontinuing these guys, the 6S and the SE. These are incredibly powerful devices and there's no need to drop support for them yet. So I don't think that that's entirely true and I really hope it's not. I think that would anger a lot of users. But the 6 and the 5S are perfectly believable. They have very minuscule amounts of RAM. You know, they're just not up to par for a new operating system that would take advantage of new effects or whatever. So yeah, that would be the cutoff point right there. The new and the old. That would certainly be a disturbing change for Apple to remove so many of the older devices, but let's talk about the viability of this. The Verifier is an Israeli website. Previously, in the past, they predicted that group FaceTime would be coming to iOS 11. Instead, it came to iOS 12.1. So they did sort of predict that, but it was wrong. To an extent, they could be right about some of these things, and they actually said that they're unsure about the iPhone 6S and the SE. So in their eyes, those devices still have a chance of making the cuts on iOS 13, but the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 5S could very well be cut for iOS 13. You know, the fact that they lasted this long already is a miracle. What the iPhone 5S was six years, the iPhone 6, five years. That's quite a miracle for such old phones. I think they had a fantastic run and it's about time to leave them on a good note with iOS 12, but the SE and iPhone 6S, not a chance. They have to keep going. Those are perfectly capable devices. They're very fast. There is no reason to leave them behind. The website does clarify and says that there are going to be some effects, some features that simply will not be able to run on these phones. And even the older phones like the 6S, if they were to be supported, the 6S and the 7 would not be getting some of the features the higher end phones will be getting in iOS 13, just because they won't have the necessary power to run certain effects or features. And as for iPads, the verifier is saying that these iPads will not be making the cut. The iPad mini 2, the iPad iPad mini 3 and even the iPad mini 4 will all be getting axed and not getting iOS 13. I think that's a little ridiculous. The cutoff point should be the iPad mini 4 at least. The iPad mini 3 could still run it, I think. And they go on further saying the iPad Air and the iPad Air 2 will not be getting iOS 13. 
I personally choose not to believe this article, but who knows, it could be true. Just prepare for it, that's all I'm saying. If you have those devices, prepare to not receive iOS 13 in case this rumor is true. And release date, we can accurately predict that because every year it's the same time. In June, Apple drops the beta, and the betas will continue up until September with about a beta every week or two weeks, depending on how much progress Apple is making up until the final release in September when they announce the new iPhone 11 amongst other devices. So. Um, that's the general schedule for iOS 13. Now, of course, we might be hearing about some things in between now and June, so I'll keep you updated on that. It's very exciting. I mean, everyone has an iPhone already. Nobody really cares about the iPhone 11 so much as they do about the new operating system that'll be running on your device already, that you already own and don't have to pay for to upgrade, I hope. At least not like the old days on iOS 2 <laughs> or iPhone OS 2. We'll see. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. That's everything we know currently about iOS 13. I'll keep you updated on any upcoming leaks and rumors. Peace.